Hey guys, we are in the basement. And today we're gonna do a John's Arcade on the road. That is right. And by the way, check these out. What do you think of these? So you know, back when Dragon's Lair and Space Ace came out in in, in the arcades, like when it was released, they made these movie posters. Okay, and these are like real legit, 27 inch by 40 inch movie posters. And they just kind of did this to kind of stress that this game is like a movie, you know, so they made movie posters. Um, these are reproductions though. You can buy these on Amazon. They're digitally printed. The quality's okay. They were 20 bucks a piece, and I actually think they're pretty badass. And Walmart actually sells the frames. They have 27 inch by 40 inch frames for 20 bucks. So 40 bucks each total it cost me for these. And I'm gonna hang these on the wall, but I don't really know where yet. I need to reorganize this wall. We need to make this look better. I think I'm gonna paint the, the whole wall journey blue, and then uh, we'll have the journey uh, frame poster, Space Ace, Dragon's Lair. Um, I like to keep that uh, Avenge, uh, uh, Attack from Mars uh, play field. I think that's pretty cool. And uh, this is like a cool uh, Frogger poster. It's like, a, it, it, it kinda looks like a, a propaganda poster. It says, victory is just a few hops away. So anyway, enough of that. Guys, we're going back to Chicago, it's true. We really are, and uh, this is gonna be the third and last Chicago video this fall. And in this video, we're gonna hook up with Greg from Arcade Impossible and the Arcade Impossible crew. And we're gonna be going to Galloping Ghost Arcade in Brookfield, Illinois. That's right, and uh, I, I have to say, and, and this is actually, I think, 100% fact. The video we're gonna do today is, I think, the most requested video I've ever had. I don't know what it is, but I get these comments a lot and often that say, John, when are you gonna review Galloping Ghosts in Chicago? And you know what? We're gonna do it in this video. So Greg and I are gonna walk through the entire arcade. We're gonna look at every single game in the place in great detail. And, uh, and then we're gonna come back. And then, uh, and by the way, I'm not trying to give the video away because uh, one of you guys mentioned to me, uh, John, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't tell us what's gonna be in the video before you do the video. I like to be surprised. I agree with you, so I won't say much. Uh, but I do wanna tell you this though, because after Greg and I walked through the entire place, uh, we had an opportunity to interview the owner of Galloping Ghost. His name's Doc. And uh, we did. However, I had some microphone issues, and the microphone, the microphone, for whatever reason, kept disconnecting. I actually had microphone issues throughout the entire day when I was in Chicago, and I've since picked up a new mic. And uh, I don't know if it was the jack or what, but uh, so that interview, the audio kept cutting out and cutting out and cutting out, and it was really uh, almost unusable. So what I'm gonna do is this. We're gonna go to Galloping Ghost in Chicago. We're gonna come back here. We're gonna do some viewer mails. And then after, at the very, very end of this video, after the credits, I'm gonna play the interview that we had with Doc uh, in its entirety with the crappy audio. I just don't wanna put it in the video because it really is bad. And I had to chop, I, I tried making it work by chopping it up and it just wasn't, it, it, it was just weird because it, it kept starting and stopping and, and, and I didn't like it. So I'm just gonna play the whole thing in its entirety with the crap audio. The audio is gonna drop out, it's gonna come back, it's gonna, I tried fixing it in Pro Tools, but whatever, that, that'll be at the end of the video. Why don't we get in the car, let's take a drive to Chicago and let's hook up with Greg and let's take a tour of Arcade Impossible. All right guys, let's go, buckle up. It's gonna be a long one. All right, here we go. All right, guys, we're in Brookfield, Illinois, and we're almost by, uh, almost at uh, Galloping Ghosts Arcade. Are, are, you, are you excited? I'm excited. I'm excited <laughs> to see what you think about this. Place. Yeah, I mean, 
Uh, it's funny, this is the most requested video. I, I People all the time are telling me I need to do a review of Galloping Ghosts, and we're gonna do it in this video. And I've been through many times, but I'm gonna let you just do your thing. Okay, we'll do our thing. And, you know. and I, I do wanna take our time. We're gonna go through the whole arcade and, and, and look at almost every game if we can. Yeah. And, cause I really wanna see what this place is about. Now, it costs 15 bucks to get in, right? So yeah, the, the, the games are all on free play, is that right? Yes. And so it's just, it's 15 bucks entry, which is a little steep if you're not gonna play anything. Cause I don't, I don't know if we're gonna really play games, but uh, we're gonna check it out. And uh, I'm very curious to see what this place is all about. Cause their thing is they're Qual the largest arcade, right? Did they pass Fun Spot? They see, said they did. They did? Yeah. But Fun Spot still says, oh, we're the world's largest. Yeah. Because I don't, because Fun Spot actually has the Guinness World Record, like Guinness qualified. Right. It. Yeah, so I don't think these guys did. But who knows, maybe Guinness will come out and, and give them the crown. Galloping Ghost says, we are the largest video arcade in the USA. We currently have over 400 plus games to play. And have more games up and running all the time. There you go. 400 plus. Well, Fun Spot's still saying it too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we'll see. So we're almost there. And, and by the way, these guys are with us. Yes. There's Jason and... I win. Hi. 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 How you doing? Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're, we're almost there. Let's keep driving. Oh, God. That's funny shit. <laughs> all right, let's keep going. All right, guys, we're here at Galloping Ghost. Actually, it's on Ogden Avenue in, in Brookfield. Yeah. Are you excited to go yeah, here? I'm excited. <laughs> Let's go check this place out, man. So here's the sign, Galloping Ghost Arcade. Games, 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 games. Uh, full disclosure, we already went in and paid. <laughs> so we're just gonna walk on in without paying, but we already paid the 15 bucks. All right, go ahead, man. All right, so let's go in here and check this place out. So as you can see, there are lots of games here. And uh, this thing caught my eye as soon as we came in here. Yeah, this Coliseum. Yeah. You know, I've had a lot of people ask about these Sega Sega games, because there's Time Traveler, right? Yeah. And, and by the way, it's like a hologram. It's like a projected image on there. It's pretty badass. That is badass. I don't know if I'd want one or anything. It's, it's gimmicky, right? Yeah. It's and like they, Dragon's Lair, but 3D, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's like half silver mirrors, like Revenge from Mars, where the image looks like it's like floating, but it's yeah. not, you know? And they also have Coliseum. Is that, a, is that the original fighting game that's in there? That's it? It's a fighting game, yeah. But that was designed for this hardware? Yes. Okay. It was like a Street Fighter type game, but yes. with floating characters. Yeah. Alright, so they got a lot of fighting. And by the way, they have a death race, which is actually pretty awesome. Obviously, it's not working. It's a project, but that's pretty rare. They won a fun spot. It's a cool XD game. It was controversial because you're like running over people. Oh yeah, the but, screams. Yeah, you're you're running yeah. over zombies, but so they got a ton of fighting games here. Yeah. War Gods being one of them. Not working though. They have a Killer Instinct. This actually has an Xbox One in it. Playing the new version of Killer Instinct. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Checking down the content. <laughs> Killer Instinct 2, which is the rare classic. I think Killer Instinct 2 is better than 1, right? I got one of these, did I tell you? Oh, you did? I traded my Play Choice 10 bar top. Oh, so it's 2 better than 1? The combo system is much harder. So yeah. It's, I'm starting with 1. I bought a 1 board and I'm switching it. So. Interesting. And then Killer Instinct 1. And then we have an Injustice Gods Among Us. Which is another... Actually, it's running a PS3, looks yeah, like. PS3, yeah. And then next to that is a Mortal Kombat 2011. That's another console game, right? Yeah. Isn't that like PS3? It's PS3. Yeah, PS3. PS3. Mortal Kombat 4. Ultimate, Ultimate Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 3. It looks like there's some kind of a switcher in here. Yeah. So there's a switch down there. You can switch between the games. Yeah. Probably a JAMA switcher inside Mortal Kombat 2. So you can clearly see if you're into fighting games, this is a good place to be. And that's the one thing I always hear people say about Fun Spot is, where's the fighting games? Right, and then this place is all this, about them. This place is all about them. And then the grid, which is this kind of like futuristic sporting event, right? Yeah. Like Team Fortress kind of-ish. Interesting controls, right? You're aiming with the trackball. Yeah. Around. It actually looks kind of fun, I have to admit. Yeah. 
And it's a pretty crazy setup with the three cabinets. Yeah. And then so Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, which my, my buddy Linoleum has this board, it's pretty rare. And, and if you guys never seen this, there, there was a Sonic arcade game, but only released in Japan, right? And it's in a, it's in a Dynamo showcase, which is like a generic cabinet. Uh, Primal Rage 2. This is actually a prototype. This is, that's right. That's right. This is a rare game. This is the only one of two that exist in the world. I actually saw their video talking about this. That's pretty crazy. I, I'm not really a fan of Primal Rage, though. Yeah. So what's this? The, and they got Primal Rage 1, and then the Out Foxies? What the hell is that? 94. Is that a gun game? It's like a time crisis type thing where you, you pop out with the uh, the pedals. Oh, dude, that's cool, man. What's going on there? You hit the that's the jump. <laughs> so you're using a joystick and a pedal and a gun and two buttons all at one time? <laughs> dude, that's a lot to manage. Wow, that's pretty cool, dude. I gotta say, that's awesome. That is weird. <laughs> WrestleMania, that's down. Uh, a superstar wrestles in a track and field cabinet. That's yeah. all right. Here's a. Oh, this is a wrestle. Dude. Yeah, yeah. My my buddy Ted has the, the whole setup, both cabinets, and he's looking for the topper. So this is one half of it. That's cool. So let's go back here. Now this. Last time I was here, like, yeah. le less than a year ago, yeah. it's always in the fighting room. Okay. Cocktails in here, and there's a wall here. Oh, really? They open, it's really tight in here, by the way. Really tight. So, all right, so over here, I don't, I, I can't say I know this game. Mission, Mission Craft? It's Starcraft Schmuck. I'm oh, it sure is? I made it, but it's, it's all based around Starcraft. In more kind of uh, character. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then Arrow Fighters. So there's a lot of, like, conversion-type cabinets here. This is not an original Dragon Spirit cabinet. Oh, right. I used to have the Namco System 1 cabinet. This used to be... God, what is this? Is this a Berserk? Wait, no. What is this cabinet? I don't know. It's not original, though. Whatever it is. A lot of dynamos. Namco Dragon Saber. Is that a sequel to Dragon Spirit? It might, I think it is. Is it? I bet you it is. Sky Shark. This looks like an old time pilot. Yeah, it is. You can see. Switcher in here, too, for... Weird. So there's a lot of, like, conversion stuff going on. But this is all the shmups here, and if I was into this stuff, I'm sure there's some good games here. I suspect there's some good stuff here, because there's a lot of cave stuff. These are expensive boards. I have a friend that collects all the cave stuff. Okay. These boards sell for like 500 bucks on eBay. Jeez. Yeah. It's all Japanese type stuff, I'm sure. Here's a Twin Cobra and a Twin Cobra 2 in like a Pac-Man style cabinet. Yeah. Another one of these switcher things here. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Wow, so they're really double. Is this how they're getting to 400, by the way? By doubling up games and cabinets? Yeah. Oh, we should ask that question. Yeah. Because here's another one Twin Eagle and Twin Eagle 2 in one cabinet. What? It's weird. Here's like a Super Pac Man cabinet with 1942. <laughs> so, 1943 and a Dynamo. That was a Berserk. That's a Berserk cabinet, right? What is this? A lot of shmups. I have to say, there's a lot of games here that I'm not familiar with. Which is cool, though. Yeah, yeah. It's not all... I mean, I've never seen this before. What is this? Damahu? That's awesome. Air, Air Buster and P47 in the same cabinet. A lot of these switchers. It's a really yeah, interesting I mean, concept. I here that this is a new thing for them, putting two in all these. Yeah. Silkworm. Silkworm, yeah. A lot of conversions. This is another time pilot. Cobra Command. What cabinet is that? Silver and, yeah, I used to play that on the. It was on the NES, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah, I think it was. Tiger Heli. Berserk and Frenzy. That's cool. Uh, Xenophobe. Uh, here's some pins. They got Space Invaders, Gorgar, Black Knight. Not working. Pinbot not working. Creature. Oh, cool. Creature's cool. Look at this topper. That is sick. That's pretty badass. <laughs> I, I do like that. <laughs> a lot. Here's some more pins. F14 that's down. Big guns. I used to have big guns. That's horrible. Did you? Yeah. 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 Funhouse I like a lot. Cool, yeah. Time, uh, fun, Twilight Zone's great. I've been wanting to play one of these. I didn't know they had one of these. Why don't you Here play it, dude? Try it. All right. Let's, let's play some Jaleco Arm Champs, too. <laughs> All right. Let's... Uh... Oh, 
elbow. Must be on cushion. That's awesome. Was it hard? <laughs> Is she good? Sweet. No, I beat that girl. So. <laughs> you win. So the first match is against a girl. That's hilarious. <laughs> so now you got this guy. You have Chang. You're gonna beat Chang. I mean, how, how masculine is that? You have this, and then one of those punch machines in your basement. <laughs> okay, what's going on here though? They're like they're they're starting out with like weak people, a girl yeah. and a Chinaman. It's like last, <laughs> last joke. <laughs> All right, so what's weaker? What's a little bit stronger than a girl? Uh, like a Chinese guy? Yeah, I wonder what's be next. What's a robot. Oh, robot. Oh, of course. Oh, this is strength test, though. Is it hard? Is it hard? <laughs> Forty-three uh, kilograms power. Wow. wow, that's good. So should we walk down this row? Here's a solar assault. That's kind of cool. Space Harrier. It's down. Here's another game, Heavyweight Champ, it's down. Let's go to, let's quickly go down, go down this row. This looks like it used to be a... This is uh, really tight. Oh, dude, this is a Pacific Novelty cabinet, dude. This used to be a thief or something. Really? Yeah. And that's a shame, it was converted to this. Yeah, double schmuck. Yeah. You went squad from squad, just picked up okay. the God, I, I can't believe, I can't get over all these double cap. What is going on? Scramble Super Cobra with a switcher. It's interesting. Sega Subrock 3D, another double cabinet, Gradius and Thunder Force. It's pretty cool. It says Gradius Gopher though, is that different than regular Gradius? I never heard of that. What's Gradius Gopher? I've never heard of that either. Uh, Gopher too? That's weird. I love Gradius, dude. I know there's Life Force and then... Huh. Alright, let's keep going. Yep. Gundam Mania. What, what is this one? Uh, Haley's Comet, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Potato. This is a uh, centipede cabinet. Strike Midway Strike Force. A lot of really interesting uh, games over here, I have to say. Right, Raiden and Raiden 2. Those are great. Raiden Fighters, Raiden Fighters 2. There's a, that was a Frogger cabinet. A lot of conversions. Here's a Gorf. With two fighting games, God, I, I have to say I'm a little disappointed by all these conversions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at this poor Cuber, dude. Cuber with Superman and Batman. Did you ever play in the hunt? I love this game. Look at this Cuber. Oh, that's sad. Blood Brothers, Wrestle War. This was a uh, Tempest. Yeah. It's a Tempest cabinet with Wrestle War in it. Here's another Tempest with Crime City in it. Uh, What's this? Heavyweight champ? You, pu you punch? Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks that's down. All right, so let's keep going. Have you ever seen this in the hunt game? What's this Bermuda Triangle? This was an Asteroids. This, this is full of water, this marquee. Oh, this dude. Like bubble and stuff. Okay, that's... It's in the hunt. Dude, that is cool. I love this game, dude. It's a... Uh, a submarine schmuck. Really? Yeah. Dude, this is so awesome, yeah. man. It's like, it should it's, like, there's water in the marquee. Like bubbles and, and it bubbles? Oh, it's yeah, got it's a little... Submarine schmuck. Alright, that's that's cool, Greg. I want to find one of these more. Is this an original cabinet you think for it? It's gotta be, right? Yeah, With that marquee? Uh, on it. Oh, that's awesome. They lost the artwork, obviously, but yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Here's a gyrish. Time Pilot, Time Pilot 84 in a centipede cabinet. Shoplifter. <laughs> With a Tron uh, stick. Someone got pissed at this one. Oh man. An interstellar with, looks like a Gorf stick on it. Kung Fu Master, that's original. Here's an original dedicated Mappy, which is cool. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, here's a Taito game. It looks like in a former Centipede or uh, Tempest cabinet, cabaret. Satan's Hollow cabaret. And uh, Tapper. And over here is a timber, by the way. I don't know if we saw that. And actually, right down here is here's a Pengo and an old Atari cabaret not working. Track and field. I don't know what the hell this is. <laughs> this looks like an old poker game or something. Converted to a track and field. Gunsmoke. This used to be a an out, a Sega game. I could tell. That was this. I bet you that was some kind of Sega driving game. Karate champ in a centipede cabinet. All right, so that's this room. Let's go over here, Greg. 
Is that game cool, Jason? I love Macross. You love that game? Yeah. yeah. Alright, they got a lot of shmups, a lot of fighting games, so the 90s kids will be happy here. <laughs> Space Lords, I've never seen this before. Dude, that looks original, huh? That's awesome. That looks pretty cool. I don't know what's going on in it. Is it like a first person asteroids game? Kind of looks like it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Trog. I like Trog. I played that at Disney Quest. That's a cool game, dude. I actually, that's a game I would like to own. I have to say that. Check this out. You can see they're like their game. Oh, their little workshop. Oh, they got a Darius back there, which is cool. What is that thing pushing on it? Is that how they repair the games? D Darius is pretty cool. It's like a three monitor game. You ever seen that? It's got three monitors in it. Oh, that's cool. And they all line up together. Or is it two? I think it's two or three 13-inch monitors. Rally X Cab Race. I love Rally X. All right, so what's back here? Bucky O'Hare, four player. Oh, yeah, that game's cool. Oh, dude, this is awesome. A Sinistar cockpit. That's awesome. That is badass. Wow, I don't know what happened there. But this, this is a pretty rare game. Yeah. And an Omega Race cockpit next to it. I always picked up an Omega Race cockpit, but this is this is that's pretty special. It's working too. Is it? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a very special game. So Midway Sarge, Vindicators. I used to kind of like that game. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Battle Zone. I never got into that. No. Stratobox is actually a pretty cool game. I actually like that. Return of the Jedi. I kind of have a soft spot for this game. It doesn't get a lot of love though. And then Star Wars, Star Wars Trilogy, the big one. We saw the little one at Greg's. This is the big one, sit down one. And then Sega Strike Fighter, that's cool with three monitors. All right, so let's go over here. So is this, this is the whole place right here, this right? This is the whole place, this whole room here. Okay, good. All right, so Warlords, that's a two player version. They also have the cocktail, which is four players. Oh yeah. Here's another double cabinet and another, looks like that used to be some kind of Century game, like a time pilot or something. Arkanoid and Revenge of Doe, the sequel. Circus, actually Circus. This is cool. Uh, Crystal Castles. Uh, this used to be some kind of Atari System 1 cabinet. Atomic Punk, that, that's like a Xenophobe cabinet, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Kicks. Kicks is awesome. Has, has a memory failure. Which that happens to all of them. Yeah. Clax. You still have your kicks, right? No, I sold it. You did? Yeah. Puzzle Fighter in a track and field cabinet. Tetris and uh, what kind of cabinet is this? I think that's another. I don't know. I, actually, I don't recognize that cabinet. So over here, Beachhead 2000. Isn't Beachhead the game that usually has the the uh, VR hood? Yeah, yeah, they have that version too. Right? Yeah. Right. Stun Runner. That's kind of a cool game. My buddy Lynn has one of those. Lucky and Wild. I, I. That's kind of cool, actually. Fun. Namco makes some badass stuff, dude. Dude, oh, you know, I always wanted this game. <laughs> Monkey Ball. Yeah, dude, I would love Monkey Ball. Look at this joystick, by the way. I mean, come on. Banana. That is so. Aw I would. I would take this game in a heartbeat. I loved Monkey Ball so much on the GameCube. Yeah. Do you remember? Never You've never played Monkey so Ball? I yeah. Okay. I, I played the hell out of Monkey Ball when it came out. I mean, when it first came out, it was like new and different and exciting. Right, right, right. I mean, there's been a gazillion sequels since, but when it first came out, I was so into it. That's pretty sick. Yeah, I've always wanted that game. All right, Need for Speed Underground, kind of a newer racer, Cruising World, Hydro Thunder, Crazy Taxi, Crazy Taxi, Silent Scope. I used to like Silent Scope too. Yeah. That shit kind of blew my mind. Because it's like a sniping game. You look, oh, yeah. you look through the scope and it's... When that came out, because I love like sniping. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's cool. You look through here and you can see the video of what you're shooting. Operation Wolf and Operation Thunderbolt. Terminator. Here's a bunch of shooters. Uh, Aerosmith. Revolution Axe. Police Trainer. Simpsons. Everyone loves Simpsons now. Yeah. It's getting so much love. All right, so they got uh, Dragon's Lair 2. That's interesting. And what cabinet is that? Asteroids Deluxe, right? Oh, is that Asteroids Deluxe? I think you're right. Is it? Yeah. No, because this is Asteroids Deluxe. I don't think it is. I don't know what cabinet this is. It seems vaguely familiar. Well, you're just not used to this part, right? Yeah. Maybe that's why. 
It's not right, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> Pit Fighter. Here's another Dragon's Lair. So that is the right cabinet, I think. The marquee looks like it's different though. I'm confused. What is that? That doesn't look right. That's not right. I don't know. Whatever. Let's keep going. So Carnival. I hear people talking about Carnival all the time. Yeah. I don't know anything about Zombie Raid. Looks kind of cool actually. Look at these shotguns with wood. Is that original? So I've noticed in my area because this place is acquiring some of the games. Yeah. It's much harder to get any kind of crisis. Here. Oh really? They're just jumping. They're out. gobbling up everything. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right, so let's quickly go to the outside. So POW, Russian attack, Commando. I used to have got everything though is in the wrong cabinets. I mean, this is an asteroids. Contra. I don't know what this cabinet is. Look at this. This is kind of bizarre, man. <laughs> so they're definitely going. They're definitely. Yeah, I know they're doing definitely quantity over quality, without a doubt. Yeah. Big time. I agree. And they're just just getting games working and getting them on the floor. You know, that's that's an old defender right there. Yeah. G.I. Joe. They've destroyed a lot of centipedes I've seen. <laughs> Ninja Warriors, that's pretty cool, dude. They definitely have some cool oddities though, like this. Look at that's three monitors. That's like Darius. That's awesome. That is cool. I don't know if I'm assuming that's original. That's Strider and Strider 2. Bunch of Neo Geo oh, six oh, slots. Geo. Holy cow, they got a lot of Neo Geos. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. They did like a single marquee, like custom yeah, artwork. Exactly. They're printing a lot of their own bezels and marquees and stuff, you can see. And they're doing custom artwork. That's not original, but it, it looks kind of cool. Yeah. A lot of Neo Geos. Holy cow. Samurai Showdown. Tons of Neo Geos. I mean, if you guys like Neo Geos, come here. King of Fighters, another dual cabinet. They put an uh, LCD, so is that like a console version? It's gotta be, right? I don't know. NBA Jam, an NBA Jam Tournament Edition. Oh, yeah, that's PlayStation 3. Oh, it's PlayStation 3, okay. Oh, they are? Is that PlayStation? This is PlayStation 3. Yeah. Okay. This is an Atomus Wave. That's an Atomus Wave? This is what we got at Greg's. Okay. It's one of these. I actually like King of Fighters, like 97, 99, yeah. around there. Arch Rivals. Pigskin. Oh, that's cool, dude. That's cool. I love this. That's awesome. Yeah, I gotta say, that's a cool cabinet. Blitz 99. Look at that beast. Dirty Pigskin Football. I can't say I've heard of that. Cyberball, elevator action in a Super Pac-Man cabinet. Bomb Jack in some kind of a stern or... I'm not sure what that is. Bubble Bobble and looks like a space duel or similar Atari cabinet. Crazy Climber in some, some oddball cabinet. Lots of conversions going on. Lots of birds. Yeah, I don't... I don't Pac-Man. Yeah. yeah, I don't recognize this cabinet though. Nibbler. That's nice. Ice. ice is fun, man. Yeah, it is. But this is not a this is not a rock cola cabinet. I don't know what this is. That is though. That is this. Wait, are these both? I'm not sure. This looks legit. I don't know. Ice is cool. Tune and calm. Pitfall two. That that's cool. But that's like a Tempest cabinet. That's a that's actually not a bad conversion though. Kind of looks legit. Escape, uh, this is a Frogger or something, it's some kind of Sega cabinet. Escape from the planet, Karnov. So they're they're definitely printing a lot. They're not seeking out the real artwork, they're just kind of printing it out, huh? Another Frogger cabinet, Toki, Gauntlet, an original cabinet. How do those feel? Pretty good? Alright, yeah. Alright, so Gauntlet Dark Legacy. That's original. What's going on here? Sega Crackdown. I'll give them credit though for having a lot of oddball stuff. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. I, I kind of like that. I don't know anything about this game. It looks like Grand Theft Auto or something. Well, like, if you agree, stuff like this, they should just put a not working until they can fix that. Yeah, right. 
So here's a gyrus cabinet converted to uh, E-SWAT. Robocop, Rolling Thunder. That's original. Rolling Thunder 2, that's cool. I gotta say, that's pretty cool. So, oh, they have, I see. So the games that don't have free play, you coin up like that. I can't say I've seen Rolling Thunder 2. I used to love Rolling Thunder, did you? Elevator Action 2, that's cool, dude. I've never seen that. Ever. Yeah, that's, that's that Taito F1 hardware, whatever it's called. I've heard that game is pretty fun. Bionic Commando. I, I used to love Bionic Commando on the NES. Gate of Doom. How are we doing on time, Greg? Right. That used to be a Tempest. A lot of dead Tempests and centipedes in this place. Here's a dead centipede. <laughs> Converted to Rastan and something warrior. Rygar. That used to be a Sega, like a Zaxxon or something. Okay. Here's a food fight that is now a black tiger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Magic sword. There's some kind of Dungeons and Dragons. That's uh, CPS2 stuff. This cabinet is mystifying me. Oh, that's a space ace, isn't it? I don't... I don't know. All right, let's go down here real quick. Double... Four player cabinets. Yeah. So they really got the 90s stuff covered here, man. More so than Fun Spot. Uh, Rival Schools, Empire Savior, Marvel Superheroes, X Men, X Men vs. Street Fighter, Double Cabinet, another Tempest, Destroyed, to make a Marvel Superheroes. So they're not into really saving games. <laughs> Just kind of put whatever you can in the cabinet. That's one of the best looking monitors I've seen in here so far. Wow, that's a, that is a nice monitor. That's a big one. Is that big? That's, that's big. Is that 20? It's a, is that an LCD? I don't think it's an LCD. That's a flat CRT. Flat CRT. Yeah. That's what I need my Sonic cabinet. That's a nice, <laughs> that is a great monitor. Guilty Gear. SVC Chaos Ultimate. All right, here's some classics. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we got Donkey Kong. Junior monitors little. Donkey Kong Junior and Mario Brothers wide body. Wow. Donkey Kong 3 with a homemade homemade marquees on these. Yeah. Mario Brothers uh, convert. Look at they got they got the wide body cabinet, but then they have Mario Brothers in a Donkey Kong cabinet. Why not, why not switch them? <laughs> put this in the right cabinet and put that in a closer cabinet. And there's another Mario Brothers wide body next to them. <laughs> so they have two Mario Brothers wides, but they put Mario Brothers in a Donkey Kong cabinet. Versus Super Mario, Flicky. Oh, dude, that's a great game. And dude, this is a, this looks like a Domino Man. Greg, this cabinet. Yeah. This could be a this could this could have been a Journey. Oh yeah. Or a Bump and Jump, or a Domino Man, or a Lazarian. It could have been a Journey, dude. It's now a Flicky. Flicky is a great game, though. Have you ever played that? Oh, it's oh, awesome. Man. Play that in Maine. Flicky's okay. awesome. All right. Frogger, actually in a Frogger cabinet, finally. Go. Zaxxon. Buck Rogers. That's kind of cool game. Mad Planets. Oh, that's... Mad. I love Mad Planets, dude. Nice. Cubert. Let's kind of take a peek over here. There's a Star Trek. No surprise, that's not working. That's a tough game to keep going. Miss Command Cabaret. Star Castle. Eh, kind of working. Gravatar, Space Duel, Xevious. Yeah, Gravatar looks good. Spy Hunter, all original. Bump and jump. <laughs> okay, so this, that cabinet right there is a bump and jump cabinet, and so the bump and jump's over here in a conversion, though. <laughs> That's not a priority. Uh, Burger time. Bosconian and a Zaxxon or something. Here's a working Gorf. Nice. Moon Patrol. Robotron. Alright, John, so yes. the last two times I've been here, I've yes. switched this cabinet. Yeah. It's basically been unplayable. It's been unplayable. Okay, this one's center. Look at this. Center. It's working? Okay. Oh, come on. It, that's bad, right? Oh, yeah, yeah there's. Are you gonna. He can't play that. So, uh, for a year. The three or four times, it's been over two or three years now. Yeah. Every time I haven't been able to play. You can't play it like that. 
That sucks. But Defender. It's the original cabinet, so that's cool. Stargate. Joust. Joust 2 is cool, by the way. That That's pretty rare. I actually, I actually kind of like Joust 2. You ever play that? that? But that's not in the... Fun Spawn has Joust 2, I think, in the dedicated. That's a conversion. Yeah. Okay. I kind of like Joust 2, actually. It's it's vertical, too. You notice that? Yeah. So Outrun, Super Hang On, Super Monaco GP. That's pretty cool. Uh, Turbo. I like Turbo a lot. Speed Racer. I do like that they have a lot of oddball stuff. Pole Position not working. Paperboy not working. APB, Road Blasters. Champion Sprint, which is the two-player version. Badlands, that's that's pretty unique. Championship Sprint is awesome. Man. You, I don't like it. I like it better than Alfred. You do? Yeah. I like Alfred better. I love those turbos. World Rally. See, Alfred is great. Here's a three-player one. Do you have a three-player? I had the two-player and actually sold it. Oh, you did? Yeah. All right, let's so go down here. Sold. Vanguard. I used to have a. I used to like that as a kid. I had it in the 2600. Konami Jailbreak, like in a, looks like a uh, Galaxian cabinet. Uh, real quick here is a Jungle King. And a Frontline in a Jungle King cabinet. And then, let's see, we have Spider-Man. Beat him up game. Gladiator in a Missile Command cabinet. Haunted Castle, Castlevania versus. That's cool. Punch-Out, love Punch-Out. Popeye. Rampage. They do have a lot of games here. Oh, dude, look at this. This is an Irish Dig Dug. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's legit. That's the Irish version. Dude, I, I would that's love awesome. to have this. That's cooler than the original this one. This got to be repro, right? I don't that's know, man. That's nice, dude. It could be. That's I, I like that a lot. So far, this is the one game I want. <laughs> Give me that. Wizard of War, Kroll. They have a Dissatron, that's cool. Guy like Dissatron. Here's a Centipede that's actually in a Centipede. That one got saved. Millipede, Galaxian, Galaga. Galaga 3 is pretty cool. Galaga 88 is awesome. Space Invaders. Mousetrap, that's a that's a really cool XD game. I like Mousetrap. Junior Pack and Super Pack. It's funny. There's like four Super Pac-Man cabinets we saw, yeah, yeah. and and they put and they Super Pack in that. <laughs> they got the Junior Pack side art on it. Here's a Pac-Man, and then Miss Pac-Man Duel with Classic and Turbo. So let's go over here. Blastroids. Oh, you know we're gonna play this. I've always wanted to play this game. This is fun game. Yeah. Xevious, cool cabinet, lame game. Rampart is awesome too, you ever play that? And of all the Tempest cabinets, they have the one that's down. Yeah, <laughs> they have Tempest. Food Fight. Rampart's not... awesome. I, I know, I love too. Rampart, dude. So much fun. And Food Fight, of course it's Food Fight, we love yeah. that. That one's not working. Here's Aliens, Predator and Cadillac uh, and Dinosaurs, Extermination, Akari Warriors in a centipede cabinet with Heavy Barrel. Midnight Resistance, Time Soldiers, Narc. I used to love Narc. Did you guys ever play Narc? Narc. Uh, That's a Eugene Jarvis game. Robotron. Really? Yeah. And it's cool. It's like it's like a it's like a Reagan era anti drug game, and you're like killing drug dealers, <laughs> and when you shoot them, they like drop needles and cocaine and stuff. That's pretty pretty funny. funny. Final Fight. Battle Toads. So here's a Turtles cabinet. They got Turtles in Time and Turtles in one cabinet. That's cab. actually cool. That. Yeah, I agree. Man, everyone loves Turtles now. Yeah. So Captain America. We got Godzilla. Conversion. So Caliber Arcade Edition. A lot of fighting games. Total Carnage. Die Hard. That's an original cabinet, those weird Sega cabinets with the, all the plastic. Oh, wow, it's like subwoofers? What is that? I don't know. That's interesting. That, that is weird. Die Hard. Ghostbusters. That's pretty cool. That's original cabinet. Diabots, Mercs. Mercs, Sunset Riders, and Wild West Cowboys of Moon Mesa. Ninja Baseball Batman. That, that game's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that game. 
I love the name. <laughs> like, just, just the idea of it yeah. is cool. Captain Commando. All right, so let's go over here. We're actually just about through this place here. Oh, sorry. Here's a uh, four-player X-Men. Double Dragon and Double Dragon 2. DJ Boy. Oh, I used to have that DJ Boy PCB. You ever Did play you? that game? No. It's some guy in roller skates. See? <laughs> it's pretty funny. Bad dudes. I used to like bad dudes for some reason. Yeah, but after you beat that game once, yeah. you're good. I played that on, my, on the NES, I think, right? Yeah. Alien Syndrome. Oh, uh, Moonwalker. Dude, Michael Jackson Moonwalker is awesome. <laughs> Where's the switcher on that one? Oh, yeah, dude. Do you like this game? Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. And he's rescuing a kids, isn't he? Suicide battery on that board too, right? Oh, does it? It's kind of a more rare game to keep going. At, Golden Axe and a Dynamo. Golden Axe: Revenge of a lot of sequel stuff. Altered Beast, Splatterhouse. That's a cool game. Yeah. It's like a uh, Friday the Thirteenth kind of Freddy. Yeah. What's his name? Jason. Yeah. What's his name? Jason. I don't think. I don't know. <laughs> the guy with the mask. Yeah. That's a cool it's game. Forgotten, Forgotten Worlds. Shinobi. Shadow Dancer. And a pe that's a Pengo cabinet. I love Pengo. Poor Pengo. Smash TV. Smash TV, that's original. Yeah. I do like Smash TV. Me too. Ghosts and Goblins in a Missile Command. Ghosts and Goblins. Ghouls and Ghosts in like a pack style cabinet. Street Fighter. That's that's the first Street Fighter. Street Fighter 1, yeah. yeah Street which Fighter. is not very good, right? No. And th when it first came out in the arcades, it had like pneumatic buttons. Oh, really? Yeah, it had yeah. these big like air... The harder you push Yeah, the, the harder, harder you push the buttons. They're giant, like, buttons, too. And they actually ended up sending somebody else to replace them all because they ended up dying like, after yeah. a while. I remember hearing those stories. Street Fighter 2, Champion Edition. I have that. I, I I like this version myself, but, you know, I don't really don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to fighting games. What you got? Is that right? It's Champion Edition? Yeah. Yeah. Big blue. Street Fighter 2 Grandmaster Challenge, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Zero Two. I have this board. I like this version a lot. And you can see here they're cramming all these boards on here to have a switcher. So they got the CPS2 Alpha 3 Naomi. and then Naomi yeah. with, uh, I guess, uh, Street Fighter. I don't know what's going on. Zero. And then Third Strike. I actually would like yeah. to get this set up. Yeah? Yeah. I've been thinking about it. Street Fighter 4 in a showcase. So they got like every fighting game you could ever want here. Right. And then, I don't know, this game looks kind of cool. Is that original? That, I don't know that one. That looks awesome. Afterburner. I used to like G-Lock, these Sega flying games. Yeah. I used to love this one too, dude. Thunderblade. Because when you sit on this thing, the whole thing like rotates. Hey, look at this, dude. Is this full motion cruising? Is that... Wait, wait. This... Did this used to be an outrun? Or did... is this cruising? This is cruising, right? This is got ass right here. Yeah. Blue Falcon. Wow, dude. This thing's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's oh, that's sick. Oh, that's F Zero. Okay, okay, that is awesome. It's huge, dude. That is so. That's badass. Yeah. That is badass. And this thing will cut off your limbs. It looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Gal Galaxy Four Sega. So that's it, man. We we did the whole place. That's so do you want to talk to the to the, to the owners right there? No. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, guys, that's that's galloping ghosts, man. Get some more hot dogs. <laughs> you wanna? Yeah. So what'd you think? That's galloping ghosts. I'll, I'll say this: a lot of games, ton of games. But they're not. He's not really going for originality, right? He just. Get, get, There's no preservation. It's just, no, it's not. It's not an arcade museum. No. It's an arcade. Yep. Yeah. The more get, games on the floor, the more people will come in. Yeah. That's why they're doing that switcher thing. Get the games working. Get it on the floor. Two two games in one cabinet. All right, guys. I think that's gonna be it for this. Uh, we're done. Oh, hi. <laughs> All right, guys, I guess let's go back to the basement.
guys, there you have it. That was the third and final Chicago video for the year. And what did you think? What did you think of Galloping Ghost Arcade in Brookfield, Illinois? Did you like it? Lots of games, right? Tons of games in that place. Now, a lot of them were conversions. I mean, we have to kind of just point that out because it's true. I mean, I understand, you know, the guys, it's a lot of work. I get it, you know, but uh, it, it's not a museum. And we said that then in the video, you know, Galloping Ghost is not an arcade museum like Fun Spot, you know, where Fun Spot has all the dedicated games working in the original cabinets. Um, you know, we went to Grinkers this year, same kind of deal, all restored games, all in really great looking cabinets. Galloping Ghost, not their MO. They, they want lots of games, no matter what. No matter what cabinet they're in, you know, they'll put multiple PCBs in one cabinet and call that two games, whatever. So, anyway, I'm glad I went there, though. Doc was a nice guy. The guy that owns the place, super nice guy. And at the end of this video, after the credits, we're going to play the interview in its entirety that we did with him. Now, warning, though, the audio is choppy. That's why I'm putting it at the end, because the audio kept cutting out, so... Anyway, there you have it, Galloping Ghosts. So, uh, I want to do some viewer mail. And, uh, guys, you've been sending me a ton of viewer mails. Thank you, by the way. Um, and I'm just kind of skimming through them, grabbing three. I think I want to do three at the end of every video. And we'll have a little bit of Tito's. I'm actually perched. Uh, it's Sunday, about 6 o'clock here. And, uh... I need this. <laughs> Who wants to go back to work? Ugh. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for sending the uh, viewer mails. I've been getting tons of them. And I grabbed three that we're going to read tonight. And if you want to send these, if you guys like this segment, send them to blkdog7 at gmail.com. That's blackdog7, blkdog7 at gmail.com. All right, let's dive right in here. Uh, this one's from Tyler. It says, hey, John, I'm a huge fan of the show and have been a subscriber for a few years now. Thank you. After watching some of the restores you've done, I was inspired to attempt one myself. A friend of mine gave me a blank JAMA cabinet to do whatever I wanted, but it's in pretty rough shape. I have space for the work, but very few tools. Before I run out and buy everything I imagine I might need, what would you consider a good basic list of must-have tools to begin a project with? I appreciate any input you could offer. Thanks, Tyler. Well, let me think about this. So when I started out in this hobby, the very first thing that I bought was a multimeter, a digital multimeter. You can buy them fairly inexpensively at Radio Shack. You're gonna need that to check voltages and just troubleshoot games in general. So, and it's also good for continuity tests and for checking fuses. I mean, there's a myriad of uses for the multimeter. So I suggest getting yourself a decent multimeter. You don't need to buy a $100 fluke one. Just go to Radio Shack, buy something around 20, 30 bucks, something around there. They have ones even cheaper, but I would suggest something around 20 bucks. It, it, it would be good if it had continuity beep. What that means is if, if you press, like so for instance, if, you're, if you want to test a fuse, right? Uh, you really should just visually look at a fuse. You should test it with a meter to make sure it's good or bad. And I always test it with my meter using the continuity test. And all it does is you, you put your meter on point A and point B, and if it beeps, there is a connection between the two. So on a fuse, I put it on A and B. If it beeps, that fuse is good. So. I would get a multimeter first, and you're going to need a soldering iron. I suggest buying the best soldering iron you can. The cheap ones at Radio Shack are going to make your life hell. Trust it. Trust me when I say this because I started out with a crappy one from Radio Shack. Now I did some soldering in high school in electronics, and I was never really great at it. But I, and I, you know, there was a time in my life when I soldered like in my late teens and then I didn't solder for like 20 years you know and then I got a, then I then I got into the hobby and I bought a cheap soldering iron at Radio Shack and I couldn't do it I was burning parts I was burning up the boards I'm like oh man I just I'm not a very good solderer well it turned out it was the iron it wasn't me so then I used a, a good weller one that my dad gave me and I'm like oh my god suddenly I can solder so buy the best one you can because it's gonna make your life that much better. And then after that, you know, for woodworking type stuff, get yourself a decent sander. Um, 
you know, what else? I, I think you can go pretty far with that stuff. You know, side cutters, uh, some good needle nose pliers. I mean, these are all the things I use the most. Um, you know, I have my favorite needle nose pliers I use constantly. I use side cutters constantly for something, you know, just for cutting wires and soldering, um, cutting T molding I use it for. Um, I use my sander a lot, the multimeter, the soldering iron. I would say that right there is probably a good starter kit. Uh, and, uh, you know, buy the best stuff you can. You know, don't try not to cheap out too much on the tools because uh, I think when you have really good tools, especially the hand tools like the pliers and the side cutters, it just makes your life so much easier when you're working on this stuff. So, all right, Tyler, I hope I answered that for you. Um, SG6970 says, I feel every home arcade would not be complete without a bit of the old nostalgic gaming to remind us where vids came from. He goes on to say, would you ever want to own an EM, an electromechanical game? This is before solid state electronics, right? Electromechanical, it was just all, you know, leaf switches and solenoids. You know, there was no logic. It was, uh, anyway, discuss the fear that some collectors may have about owning an EM. Might we see any EM game in your future arcade collection like an EM rifle game or an EM pin? What are your opinions about the predecessors of video games or any suggestions you have for collectors wanting to purchase one of their own? Keep on gaming, SG6970. Okay, so first of all, yes, I have considered owning an EM pinball machine for some time. Uh, I've looked at them multiple times. I see them on Craigslist. A lot of times they're fairly inexpensive. They don't really scare me. I think I, I could figure it out because the EM games, they don't have computers. They don't have PCBs. There's no microprocessor. The whole the whole thing is basically controlled by like very simple, like, like, like a bicycle like logic. It's hard to explain. It's like lots of leaf switches and solenoids and coils and switches. And, you know, it's almost like a Rube Goldberg machine, you know, like a... Uh, you know, the, everything is mechanical, you know, like the drop targets and the scoring reels. And uh, I would like to get one. I've looked at them a lot and, and I've thought about it. I'm, I'm a little worried about getting an EM pinball machine and being bored because the EM stuff is really before my time. You know, that stuff might have existed when I was a very young child, but I it was lost on me. I didn't even know what the heck it was. Um, I do think the EM gun games are pretty cool, like Haunted House, um, which is a midway game. That, that's pretty badass. So to answer your question, yes, I, I do want an EM pinball machine. I've looked and looked. I always thought it would be a good pinball machine for the garage. Um, I remembered playing EM type pin, pins when I was younger at campgrounds, but I was really young. Um, and the thing is, I don't, you know, uh, what's the fear? I, you know, uh, EMs are a little mysterious because they are so mechanical. Um, that actually is appealing to me though. And I've watched a bunch of videos. Uh, there's a, a, a pinball video series called Disso Pinball. They're, they're dynamite. I've watched all of them, even the EM stuff, which I know nothing about. But I've watched all those EM videos and it seems like a lot of cleaning switches. You know, there's tons of leaf switch stacks and you clean in between, replace the switches and things dry out, the bake light and you replace stuff. You know, it looks like a lot of switch cleaning is what I'm, what I can, what I gather. It looks like a lot of taking stuff apart, cleaning it and putting it back together. Um, doesn't scare me. And I know there's a lot of resources and places that still sell, sell the parts. So again, to answer your question, I'm considering an EM game. If I could find the right deal and the right title with the right artwork, I I'm going to, I'm going to do it. And, uh, and I think that, you know, he said discuss the fear that some collectors may have. I'm going to really suggest that you seek out those this old pinball videos. Fantastic. Go watch the EM ones. There's some that are on the shuffle bowlers, which are really cool. The, the, the little miniature bowling alleys. Totally cool. There's ones on the pitch and bat games, EM pimp. Just go watch those. Seek those out. Google this old pinball DVDs, and you can buy the DVDs. I've purchased all, if you guys like my videos, you're gonna love the this old pinball videos, trust me. Just Google that. So SG, did I help you? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Someday, I, I think a pitch and bat would cool, a gun game. I would love to have one of the bowling games. Just cool shit. Hi John, this is Logan, or Unwound Sa Sega on the John's Arcade Forum. 
He says, do you use the same coin door lock on all your arcade machines? I think I heard you say this once. If so, so where did you buy the locks and what kind of locks are they? Most of my machines don't have a coin door lock on them and I would like to start adding locks to them, as you do. I only usually use a single screw in my back door for convenience. Keep up the good work, John. Good luck on 15,000 subscribers. We're almost there, by the way. We're, we're over 14,000 subscribers now. We're almost at 15, so uh, thanks, guys. Tell your friends. Let's get to 15 by the first of the year. That'd be awesome. <laughs> All right, so let's answer your question. Uh, and by the way, yeah, I'm having a little more Tito's. Someone made a comment <laughs> about about me drinking, saying that they're worried about me, my health, because uh, I'm a video game player. I'm an, apparently an alcoholic, and uh, uh, you know, video games are are not a very healthy lifestyle. You know, I'm I'm promoting a very bad lifestyle here with video games and booze. Uh, I, I kind of had to laugh at it. I mean, okay, fine. I get, yeah. Kids don't do this. Don't drink booze. This is a for adults. I'm a, I'm an adult. I earned this. Okay. And, and then and then he also said the video games is I, I, I'm promoting all this unhealthy stuff. Video games and booze. <laughs> I had to laugh. And the truth is, and I, I replied to him. I said, listen. I go to the gym five days a week. I do 20 miles a week on the elliptical, right? I, I lift weights, you know? I lift weights every day. <laughs> I can have a drink, okay? I, I, I'm not a sloth. I'm not a lazy guy. But, if, you know, it's 6 o'clock. I'd like to have a drink tonight, okay? I, I think I could do that. And you guys are all adults, and if you're not, don't do this. And if you are, do whatever you need to do to, to get through the day. <laughs> Me, Tito's. All right. <laughs> anyway, do I use the same coin door lock? Yes, I do. I use the same lock on all of my games. Let me show it to you. It's a, uh, it's an Illinois double bitted 3001 lock. That's that's what I use. And uh, in the beginning, I didn't. In the beginning, I was buying all kinds of random locks. I'm trying to get a lock. Let me go grab a lock real quick. All right, here's the lock I use. This is an Illinois double bit, and they call it a double bit because the lock, the key, has has uh, teeth on both sides, okay? So it's a double bit, and it's the Illinois brand. I buy this at HAP, H-A-P-P, -P, Google Suzo HAP, okay? Now this is not a cheap lock. It's about five bucks, which by lock standards is, is not cheap. But if you have one game or two games or three games, it's 15 bucks, right, for three locks. And uh, I use the same key. Now in the beginning, I wasn't doing this. I was just buying whatever locks I could find. And this, by the way, this is a seven eighth inch lock, right? I believe, yeah, that's right. Seven eighth inch. And this lock pretty much fits every single game. And uh, uh, some games it might not fit all the way, but you can bend the little uh, the little arm to make it like work. Um, but I use this lock on everything, and having the same key is super convenient because uh, in the beginning I wasn't doing this. I was buying whatever locks I, I needed. You know, I, I would go on eBay and buy you know brand A, and then a month later I need another lock, and I'd buy a lock from Twisted Quarter. And eventually I'm like, this is stupid. I, you know, I, I have like 20 different keys. I'm trying to figure out which key goes to which game. And so eventually it dawned on me, duh, why don't you buy the same lock for every game? That way, I've got like 7,000 of these keys now because every lock comes with four keys. Does it come with four or two? Whatever, it comes with two keys, every every lock. So I've got tons of these 3,001 Illinois double bit keys. And so yes, I, if you plan on collecting a bunch of games, have the forethought like I didn't to, to buy the same lock. And uh, if you go on Suzo, I, I think this is a great lock by the way. I think it's a good looking lock. I think some of the locks look kind of cheap. I know we're just talking about a lock in your basement, but it is part of the whole aesthetic to me. And having a nice quality commercial looking lock on the game actually adds something. So whatever. Uh, Illinois double bit 3001 at Suzo Hap. So anyway, that's it for the viewer mail this week. Uh, and uh, by the way, I, like I said, I, I have a ton of these guys. I mean, you guys have sent me a ton of viewer mails. And I mean, if I go in my Gmail and, and do subject line viewer mail, it's it's like two screens worth. 
And uh, so I could easily do a, an all viewer mail episode. I think we're going to do that later. And so if you want to send viewer mails, send them to blkdog7 at gmail.com. That's blackdog7, blkdog7 at gmail.com. Important. This is very important. Please, in the subject line, put viewer mail. Please do that. It'll you, you just have to do that because otherwise I can't find them. Subject line, viewer mail. So anyway, I think that's going to do it for this video. Uh, yes, the music in the video is from my band, The Kill Screens. Actually, the music that I played in this video is not on this CD. It's actually on our SoundCloud page. If you go to soundcloud.com slash The Kill Screens, um, there's all kinds of songs, uh, B-sides, work in progress songs that are on the SoundCloud page that you can download for free, including the songs I played in this video. And of course, we have our album release, Science Fiction Movie by our band, The Kill Screens, which is me and Matt McCarthy, available on Amazon and iTunes and Spotify. You can get the physical CD on Amazon, you can get the MP3 album on iTunes or Amazon, and then also you can stream it for free on Spotify if you're a member. So if you guys want to support me, here's a way to do it. The Kill Screens CD. And also, real quick, I'm not going to talk a lot about this, I promise, because I don't want to be the e-beggar. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't believe in it. Um, I do these videos because I want to do them, because I enjoy doing them. But if you guys do want to support me, and I've had you guys ask me many times, hey, can I send you money? What's your PayPal address? People have asked me this, okay? I've been told to start a Patreon page. And I started to do it, and I stopped. I didn't do it, okay? Now... YouTube, though, has added a new feature called fan funding, okay? And it's a way you guys can support the channel by donating money to this cause, okay? And I enabled it because it's part of YouTube now, and I think everyone's going to be enabling it. So if you guys do want to support me, now you can. You can either do it by buying a CD or going on the my YouTube page. There's a support button. Click support, and you can make a donation to John's Arcade. Now, if you guys do do that, I promise you, I'm gonna whatever money comes in through that, I'm gonna use to in, reinvest in this channel. Um, in 2015, I would I wouldn't mind getting a better camera. Uh, not that my camera shit, but uh, there, my camera now is a few years old, and, and there's ones that are better. So it, it, you know, I, I would reinvest and get a new camera. I want to get a wireless microphone set up. So if you guys want to help me get that stuff sooner than later. Go to my page and press support. Listen, I'm, I'm not going to talk about this a lot. I promise. Because <laughs> I don't really like the begging thing. Uh, but it's part of YouTube now, and I figured, what the heck, let's enable it. You know, I listen to, like, Mark Marin, who I respect a lot, and he's constantly pimping shit. I'm like, you know, I never pimp anything. Lately I have, though. I, I've been pushing the CD a little more. But whatever. I guess it's kind of natural, right? Eventually, it's like, hey, I'm doing all this work. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Uh, so, we got to get back to the 720 because it's actually now bothering me more than ever that it's over there broken. Not broken, but just a part. So, I got to get those overlays on. I got to get the joystick back on. So, we'll be doing that in the next week or two. And then, listen, I, I want to tell you about something. YouTube now does 60 frames per second. And I can do that. I have the technology to do that. And uh, so I'm going to be experimenting with 60 frames per second in my videos. I think it's going to be actually really cool for gameplay videos. Because I was thinking like, okay, so why don't I just do a test video? A shorter one, maybe this week. I was thinking maybe versus Super Mario Brothers. Because I had someone uh, recently a couple times say, John... Uh, can you make a versus Super Mario Bros. video? Now, I, I've already done that video, but a long time ago, and really crappy. And so, maybe I'll do a versus Super Mario video this week, and we'll do it 60 frames per second. 1080p, 60 frames per second. And I'm curious to see what you guys think of the video quality. Because if it's worth the extra effort, I might do all my videos 60, uh, 60p or 60 frames per second. Um, it's going to be a little bit more work on my end because the files are going to be larger. Uh, like double the size. Because right now I'm recording 10, 1080p 60i, which is uh, 60 frames interlaced. Which nets out at 30 frames per second. And so this is double. The file size will be double because I'll be doing 1080p 60 frames a second. Um, 
And I'm, I'm a little worried how it's gonna work in low light. And this is why I talk about maybe getting a new camera. Cause if I can get a new camera that does 60 frames per second really well in low light, that might be worth investing. And also 4K is around the corner too. But anyway, so I'm gonna experiment with 60p, 1080p, 60, because YouTube's now supporting it. You have to use Chrome, by the way. Um, if to see the videos in 60 frames per second. Um, so we'll be dabbling with that in the next couple weeks. I, I'm interested to hear what you guys think of it, but it is gonna make my life a little more, uh, ch not challenging, it's just, it's gonna be a little bit more work because it's gonna take twice as long to, to bounce the videos. Uh, you know, cause once I'm done editing the video, the video has to render. And a two hour movie, Right now, I can r render that movie in about two hours. Um, if I do it at 60p, it's gonna be double that, if not more, you know. So that's gonna slow me down a lot, especially when I'm working on videos on, on Sunday nights, and I wanna get it out so you guys can see it, you know, Sunday night or Monday morning. So that's gonna really slow me down. So I, I'm not sure if it's worth it. We'll see, we'll experiment with it in the next video. Anyway, that's it, guys. We're done. Okay, so what's gonna happen now is uh, I'm gonna play the John's Arcade uh, logo with the music, and then we're gonna play the unedited uh, interview with Doc from Galloping Ghosts, and I did try to tweak the audio to make it more audible because it does cut out, and then it comes back, and it cuts out, and I tried fixing it. I did the best I could, but we'll just, so if you guys wanna see it, if you made it to the end of the video, you might as well just go watch it, so. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Later and bye. Uh, actually, we opened in uh, 2010, August 13th, 2010. Okay. Yeah. Um, and really, the goal was just to open uh, an arcade that catered to all all types of arcade gaming. Yeah. Uh, my priority was to make sure that everything worked very yep. well. Um, back when I used to go to arcades, I used to spend about 20 bucks every time I went. I grew up in arcades, so it was... Uh, one of the things that I always noticed was that I always played my favorite games, but didn't really try a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Like, I always played Double Dragon and Altered Beast, a few of the classics and stuff, and making it uh, free play the the concept was to get people to try stuff that they had to never try other stuff absolutely yep. not just their favorites and yep. uh, also it really was going to help uh, get people into scoring as well so there's definitely a lot of elements to it which was a Sega prototype board that never came out and just kind of surfaced and people have been talking about it a little bit here and there and uh, managed to snag one of those out in Japan. And, that's awesome. Uh, so we're, we're so well, happy. That's the one thing I know is you have a lot of stuff I haven't seen elsewhere. A lot of the 90s shooters and stuff. I've been a lot of
so yeah. instead of like these other it's previously dedicated cabinets. The, the downside to candy cabs and uh, arcades that you have to sit down at is they, they take up more space. Like yeah. they're technically smaller, but because you have to sit right, at them. Right, chairs. Yeah. It, it just takes up a little bit more room. Like yeah. I, I love the candy cab yeah. design uh, with our production company, the game that we're putting out, Dark Presence. We have a really cool candy cab design that we're going to be putting out. Oh, cool. But uh, it's just, it's all about space here right now. And yeah. we're so tight. We've been working so much on expanding and just uh, fitting everything into the space that we already have. Right. Right. It's, it's a constant struggle. Um, we have right now 97 games that we have in the back room that we want to bring up. And it's some really rare stuff with really great stuff that a lot of people have been asking for for a long time. Uh, a lot of classic stuff. But you yeah, need room. <laughs> it's all about room. All right, so Doc, I have to ask this question because, like, my channel is dedicated to like restoring games, preserving the history of games. I do see a lot of stuff that's been converted to something else. For sure. Like, like, what's your stance on it? Like, what, what, what is it you're accomplishing? You think you do? You just want the games working, but you're. I'm just curious about that. That's, that's the first step is to make sure that we have the games. Yeah. Um, we have been going back and. And a lot of the conversions, there's been conversions that I've seen from our first batch of games that yeah. it's like somebody's converting a Tempest into Crime City right. or a Tempest yeah. into Kadash and stuff. And it's like, that's not what I'm doing. And right, right. Uh, um, so are you saying that you're not converting them? You're getting them like that already converted? Mo most every... Yeah. Most of the original games that we got were already converted into something else. Yes. Um, we've been going around, and there have been times where I'll get a board, like our uh, our Mappy cabinet. We had that in a cabaret cabinet, yeah. and that had something else in it. Well, you have the dedicated Mappy now. Not, well, that's been that's been the big thing lately. Yeah. It, it, it's so it's 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 great when we're able to go back, and we did that with most recently within the last two months. We've upgraded our the last three months our Stargate, our Moon Patrol, our Carnival, our Mappy. So when we can, we love to get them in original cabinets. Yeah. Um, th th just with the sheer volume and the sheer number of games, there's always so much wiring. Like we have a track and field cabinet and a You've track and field board. You've got a lot of track board. and field cabinets in we here. We do. We do. <laughs> you have a lot of time pilots, a lot of tempests, a lot of centipedes. <laughs> the, the, the problem is like those original games and track and field's one that I yeah. just need some time to get that in a proper cabinet and get right. that restored to mo more original. Yeah, yeah. So it's just uh, a time thing. It, over absolutely. time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's Cuz I like to see more dedicated machines, you know. I would as well. Yeah. It's 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 really cool to have the games and again, that's always the first thing like yeah. it's there's definitely a lot more casual players. Most of them have never seen have an original no cabinet. Right, right. But as a collector, and like I love arcades. Like if I can get them in original condition, that's great. Yeah. Um, there's some games that like it, it's just so hard to find the original cabinet on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're constantly working. We had a, um, for example, our Dragon Slayer cabinet. Yeah. Uh, originally, we had that running on a PlayStation 3, and if there. You, I should preface, like, everything's in the original hardware. Yeah. Dragon's Lair was one of the few that everybody are using Daphne and stuff for yeah. that. I always, the goal was to get an original Dragon's Lair laser disc up and running. Yep. Um, when I bought uh, the original batch of games, Dragon's, uh, Double Dragon 3 was in a Dragon's Lair cabinet. And... <laughs> <laughs> Now we have we are converting that back. We've got uh, the original control panel. I've got the laser disc. I've got right. the player. Uh, I just need to wire it. Yeah. And uh, are you going to run the original player? You're going to get like the LDD 8000 with the uh... all original players. That's yeah. one of, like the laser discs that we have right now. We we had Dragon Slayer yep. 2 running the same way. Uh, that's now back in. It's not an original cabinet, yeah. but it's the original laser disc, the original player. Sure. No Daphne. Yeah, yeah. Everything's original. Uh, same thing. Time traveler, all original. Awesome. It's uh, it's satisfying to have that stuff up and running. Absolutely. Even though it's it's within the in, within the arcade scene, it's considered to be so difficult to keep that stuff up and running. But it's not. I have a Dragon Slayer at home. 
it's well, and if you get the if you get the Merlin board, you know about that? Yeah. Yeah, you can upgrade to the better laser disc player. For sure. Because the original one is junk. <laughs> but that's the thing, keeping it original when it's, we can. Yeah, I know, it's, but yeah, it's, yeah. But it's it's just a player. It's still running the laser disc. For sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. It's uh we're and eventually we might have to do that. Yeah. But for right now we want to keep it original player, original disc. Gotcha. And, so let me ask you about a lot of cabinets have two boards in them. Yes. With with a switcher, JAMA switcher of some sort, right? Yes. So what's your philosophy on that? Are you just trying to get as many games possible that people can play? Yeah, or? it's um, some of the games like uh, the one we're working on here. Is, yeah. uh, this is uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Street Fighter 03 Upper, which uh, the original Alpha 3, we have the US one, which came on uh, Capcom CPS 2, but then uh, 03 Upper was released. Or I can only fit one more cabinet, but I have allocated to a specific game. Right. And we've been bringing out some big stuff. So how many games do you have in here? Uh, we have 436 games right now. How many of you have 436 games? We do say we have the world's largest arcade. Yeah. Um, we've actually been, uh, we're, Walter Day is, uh, Trying to work out an event uh, here, so we've we had all the time. They did. 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 They what I'm coming here for. I'm coming to play the game. Gotcha. So that's what to us is most important. The game. Alright, cool. So Doc, before we go, what's your favorite game? Your <laughs> single favorite uh, game. You gotta pick that one. is huh? currently I would say I, I, I had two different ones before I There must be what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Right now uh, say it, the first aside thing. from our game <laughs> Dark Presence, yeah. I would say I've been playing a lot of Garo Mark of the Wolves. Okay. Thanks Thank for coming you. on. Thank you awesome very much. Awesome place. Keep up the work.